and join me in this morning's entry. All are welcome. The words are on the screen. seated. Good morning and welcome to the meeting place of the Friendship Presbyterian Church. I have been asked to make an announcement and I do so with some amount of trepidation, but uh, the session has asked uh, to make this announcement so that you don't hear by rumors. At the end of this year, Diane has opted to go into full retirement and not renew her contract with us going forward. So first of all, we want to be happy that she will be spending more time with her family and enjoying retirement, which I know is a blessing. For the same token, uh, that is harder for us and we will not see her as often, uh, but we are thankful for what she has done and all the blessings that she has given us. The session you know, has not just you know, step back. Uh, they have contacted the Presbytery and are making uh, steps with the Presbytery to look for a appropriate replacement. So I would ask that you keep this situation in your prayers. Ask for wisdom, discernment for our Presbytery and obviously our session in finding the appropriate uh, replacement to carry forward uh, starting in January. So, uh, again, fairly new uh, information, uh, and I, I, my heart is just so thankful for all that Diane has done, and I want that to be the, uh, the, the thing that goes on in my mind, and while the session has their work cut out for them, uh, we know that they will, and God will provide uh, the, right, the right solution. Amen. Amen. Okay. Are there other announcements? Please uh, join me in the call to worship. 
Welcome, friends, to this holy day. We come to offer thanks. We come to sing and pray. Welcome, friends, to this time set apart. A time to remember those we love, and a time to remember the holy promises of God. Welcome, friends, to this table of remembrance and joy. The table where we are all the feast we share with many. Welcome, friends, and let us worship God. All right, please stand if you are able and join me in the singing of our opening hymn, All Who Hunger, Gather Gladly. Amen. God's life-giving word and spirit conquer the powers of sin and death. Thanks be to God for the good news. In Christ, we are forgiven. Light for light, 
true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was the incarnate of the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. And please now enjoy this special music.
you for the blessings that you have given us in ways that we don't always notice and forgive us for that but we just thank you that we were able to give back this day in love in your holy name amen good morning you're so patriotic today aren't you didn't I see you earlier this week? Mm -hmm. Okay, I, at this time, Emmy and Doris, would you come up and uncover the elements, please? <laughs> They're getting double duty. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll sue up your pay. Yeah. May as well stay because I'll have you covered up too. Okay, what what elements do we use in communion? <laughs> What's an element? <laughs> What's the stuff we eat in communion? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the bread? Can you think of the other one? Juice? Yeah, it's what I thought you said. Good. <laughs> So anyway, what I want to talk about today is a meal that happened a couple thousand years ago. This is, a, this is the bread, okay? And this is the cup. And it was the Passover meal. And Jesus was with his disciples. And he started to talk about his body being the bread of life and his blood being the cup of salvation. And he said, you need to eat this stuff and then remember what I've done for you. Now, if you look back, they had never had communion, communion before. So it was a very odd thing that he was saying. I mean, if somebody came to you and said, you're going to eat my body and drink my blood. Are you kidding me? And they must have thought it was pretty strange too, right? But Jesus said, you need to do this and this to remember me. And they're sitting there thinking, well, you're right here. 
I'm not going to forget. You're here. Why would I have to remember you? But see, he had been telling them he was going to go to the cross, wasn't he? And he was telling them he was going to be leaving them because he was going to die. And he wanted them to remember what giving of his body and giving of his blood meant. Can you think of something that it means for us? Because that night Jesus was talking about his dying. But that's not what communion represents, is it? Communion represents life that he's given us through his death. So when we think about this meal, we're not thinking about dying. We're thinking about living forever with Jesus. That's what this meal represents. And I just, I know that we do, we have communion what, once a month. And so you're very familiar with it. But sometimes we get so familiar that we don't remember what we're really doing and what it really represents. So can you remember that the night he talked to them, he spoke about his death, which brought us life. And when we do, when we have communion, we're remembering that he died so that we can have life. Okay? Got that? Got that, Billy? <laughs> There's a test afterwards, okay? <laughs> Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that Jesus has come to die to give us life. We praise him for that. Amen. Thanks for coming up. Let's pray. Gracious Father, as we come to this place this day, planning on sharing a meal later, a meal of remembrance, with family, and that's a special part. Heavenly Father, we praise you this day that we are able to worship together and praise you together and maybe learn some things together as well. And so we just, we just thank you for that. We also, Father, people have needs. Sometimes they're unspoken, and so we don't know what they are, but you do. And so we lift those needs to you. Or maybe needs that, that we forgot about. Shame on us, but if we forgot about it. We lift those needs because you remember them. Father, we also lift Dave and his entire family through this difficult per period that they're going through, this grieving process. Bring them comfort. May the memories bring them joy. We also think of Sherry, who's really struggling right now, and we pray for your healing power to touch her. We pray that the pain that she's experiencing, that they'll be able to give her something to help with that pain. We also lift Jen to you this day, and, and uh, the benefit that we're having later in the week for her, that, that it's good that you have blessed us to be a blessing. And so we thank you for the opportunity for us being blessings to Jen. We also uh, lift Heather in prayer, and, and we pray that the cast come off in a week. And it's kind of been a long time, and so, so we just pray that all the, the, the healing that needs to be done is done. We lift Joanne to you today. She's not feeling well, and... And she's kind of a staple back there, Father. So what she's missing, um, there's like a big hole back there. And so we, we just lift her to you today, and we ask for your healing power upon her. Also, Leslie, who's really gone through a great struggle with her life, with, with her foot and with her feet. And so we just, we just pray for her also. We're grateful this day that Michelle, Michelle and Jeremy made it home safely and the kids, we praise you for that. And we also uh, ask for traveling mercies for, for those in the Finch family that are, are traveling and, and keep them safe. And we pray for the benefit on Friday that, that things go well and, and everything falls into place and, and a lot of money is raised to help Jen with, with, with her bills and, and her all, whatever she would need it for. And so we just pray for that. And Father, 
Today is a day to remember. To remember the blessings that you've given, given us. To remember the sacrifice made for us. And so we just praise you for those things and we're so grateful for, for your tremendous love. For the love that Jesus has shown us for the blessings we've received because of it. And so we just give you all the praise this day. In your name and in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. At this time, our hymn of preparation, Here, O Lord, I see thee face to face. If you are able, please stand. to 
worship with him. They had communion that Sunday, and it was a Presbyterian church as well. But when they passed out the bread, they would hand it to you, and you just pop it in your mouth and eat it. They didn't eat as a body of believers. And I don't know about you, but if you've had teenagers, you know what this is like. Everybody eats at a different time. But that's no way to share a meal. A meal is to be shared together, so we partake of the bread all together as well as the juice. So I just wanted to say, we, we're not going to have a private, separate meal. And we're not going to go ahead with our own private suppers. We're going to have communion today. Let me read on. Don't you have homes to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God by humiliating those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you? Certainly not in this matter. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whatever you, whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. This God's holy word. Thanks be to God. Now, Fred and Cheryl went to Haiti in 1985. They adopted a daughter there. They had two sons at home, but they wanted a daughter. This little girl, she was four years old, and her mother and her parents were killed in a, a car accident. And so she had no family. So when they went and they picked her up as the, and they were headed home, they went through the airport and all of a sudden she reached up with her little hand and, and took their hands. And so they knew that she was beginning to accept them as, as part of her family. And when they got home, they sat down and they had a, a big feast. I mean, it was more than just a dinner. It was a big feast with all the fixings. And they began eating. And her eyes were really big. But then as dinner went on and they kept eating more and more, she kept watching and she got this look of anxiety on her face of concern, of worry. And finally, Cheryl realized what was going on. This little girl had gone hungry before. And so she was so afraid that when they ate all that food before them, that there wouldn't be any more food the next day. And so Cheryl took her hand, and she took her to the refrigerator, and she opened the door. She said, you see, we have more milk. We have more juice opened the freezer door and said, you see, there, there's meat in there. Went to the cupboard and showed her the canned goods and the flour and, and all the food they had in the cupboards. And, and the little girl, she finally was relieved and had a smile on her face because she understood that there was more food for tomorrow. And her mother assured her by saying, you will never, ever go hungry again. And today, as we share a meal, because of what Jesus has done for us, we will never spiritually go hungry ever again. We don't have to be afraid of ever being hungry spiritually. Now, if you came and you're really hungry, this meal will not fill you physically. But you can go to lunch with me, Jeff, and Roy and Karen, whoever goes. You can go to lunch and we'll eat later. But this meal is to spirit you, spiritually fill us. Are you spiritually hungry today? Do you want God to fill you with his power? And as we look at today's scripture, we see that there are lessons to be learned in this scripture. Let's look at verses 23 through 25. And most of my sermon is just focused on this part of the scripture. It says, For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. What's the lesson that we can learn here? I think it's a lesson in obedience. Jesus says, do this. Do what? Do this in remembrance of me. He wants you to do this. Share this meal. Jesus came to earth with a mission, didn't he? And his mission was to save mankind. His mission was to humble himself, to die on a cross. Complete obedience to God the Father. That was his mission. And that's what he did. If we look at Philippians chapter 2 and verse 8, it said, And being found in appearance as a man, came to earth, he looked like one of us. He humbled himself. And let me tell you, when you're God, and then you come to earth to become one of us, that's humbling yourselves. He became obedient to death even death on a cross, because that's the worst death there is. So Jesus did this for us, because Jesus was obedient. Now we have hope. Not only that, we have salvation. And we'll find when we follow Jesus' example that our lives will be better. That doesn't mean that we won't have any problems. That doesn't mean that things are always going the way we want it to. But it was, it does mean is this. When we are obedient to God, we are blessed. When we are obedient to God, we are blessed. Because obedience to God brings grace, it brings righteousness to us, and it brings life. So we, above all people, are blessed. And when we put God first in our lives, we will be blessed. It's a blessing, it's an honor and blessing to serve him, to be his servant. It's a blessing when we put God first in our lives. When we take Sundays off from our work and we worship God, we are blessed. When we honor our parents, we are blessed. When we respect the sanctity of life, we are blessed. When we honor our wedding vows, we are blessed. When we obey God's laws and not man's laws, but we have to, we have to obey man's laws as well. But when we obey God's laws, we are blessed. When we are honest, we're blessed. When we show gratitude for what we have because God has given us all this stuff, we are blessed. Living a godly life, it honors God and it blesses us. In 1 Peter chapter 2 it says, To this you were called because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. So Jesus gave us an example to follow, an example of obedience. You see, he was obedient to the Father, wasn't he? Living a life of obedience. We have to choose what God wants over maybe sometimes we want something differently. Living a life of obedience to God. <coughs> will experience in all the blessings that God has for us. And all of a sudden, his priorities will become our priorities. His desires will become our desires. His mission will be our mission. And the first lesson that we see here today is one in obedience. Now, there was a man working in his yard and his neighbor peeked over the fence, and they began to visit back and forth. And he told his neighbor that they had gone to a seminar on, on remembering, you know, to help better your memory. And so the neighbor said to him, he said, oh, that's nice. He said, who was the speaker? <laughs> and he said, well, what's that flower that smells really good and has thorns? And, and the neighbor said, rose. Rose, who was that speaker yesterday? <laughs> Sometimes we have a hard time remembering, don't we? Have a hard time remembering. Let's look at verses 12.
24 and 25. For some reason, I'm having, there it is, okay. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Second lesson is a lesson in remembering. In remembrance of me. Jesus wanted them and us to remember what he did for us. He wants us to remember him. And the Lord knows how short our memories are, doesn't he? So he has given us ways to remember. He has given us the rainbow so that we can remember that he will never ever destroy the earth ever again with a flood. We have Jesus' parables so that we can remember the lessons Jesus wanted to teach us. And we have communion to remember the sacrifice Jesus made for us. The blood, the blood reminds us that our sins are forgiven. The body or the bread of, of life, Christ's power and presence in our life, that's what we're reminded of. When we fail to remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for us, then we fail to be grateful, don't we? We fail to sacrifice for other people the way Jesus sacrificed for us. We fail to realize how amazing grace is, and grace truly is amazing. I can remember the first time that I realized what grace was. I had gone to church all my life, but it wasn't until I was in my 40s that I understood the grace of God. It took me that long to figure it out. God's grace is truly amazing. But when we fail to, to recognize that sacrifice that Jesus made for us, then we fail to forgive other people, don't we? We fail to be God's holy people. May we never forget May we never take the sacrifice lightly. Always remember the depth of love that God has for each of us. How much he loves us that he would send his son, his only son, to die, not to just die, but to die on a cross for us. That is called love. Let's look at verse 26. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The third lesson is a lesson in proclaiming. You proclaim. You proclaim. When we participate in the Lord's Supper, we proclaim what we believe, and we believe that Jesus is our Lord and Savior. We believe that Jesus is the Son of God. We believe that Jesus is the only hope that we have. We believe that Jesus is all we will ever need. Not only that, we proclaim something else. He's coming back for us. And no matter how nice your house is here, what a day that will be when we move into that new home. It, I, I don't know what it's like, but I know it's going to be great. If Jesus made it and prepared it for us, it's going to be spectacular. And I look forward to that day because he is coming back for us. How do I know that? Because he told me he was in his word. In Matthew chapter 28, it says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. It's a great commission. The great commission. It calls believers to a life of obedience. It calls believers to preach the gospel not just by our words, but by how we live our lives, by example. 
we are called to share the good news. Now, the Duke of Wellington was preparing to take communion, and this man, this poor man, who was in kind of rather tattered clothes, went up and knelt down at the altar. And when one of the elders of the church saw this, the elder went up and kind of tapped him and whispered to him and said, could you please just wait? Wait your turn. The Duke of Wellington is going to receive communion first. And as the man, the man tried to get up, the Duke put his hand on him and didn't allow him to get up. And he said to him, he said, stay where you are. He said, we are all equal here. Folks, we're all equal here because we're all sinners here. And we all need a savior. And as I told Cooperstown today, that if sinners weren't allowed in worship, no one would be there. They wouldn't even have a pastor. <laughs> We're all equal here. We're all sinners and we all need Jesus. Isn't that the point of all of this? And we're about to share a meal at the Lord's table. And the meal's been prepared for us, his chosen people. Come to the table this day in obedience, in remembrance, proclaiming that Jesus Christ is Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we share this meal together, what a special meal this is to fill us spiritually. It's a one-of-a-kind meal. So we praise you this day that as a body of believers together, in communion, we can share the meal that Jesus had prepared. Amen. At this time, I would ask the elders to come up and again uncover the elements. Friends, this is a joyful feast of the people of God. Men will come from east and west and from north and south to sit at the table in the kingdom of God. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites those who trust him to share the feast which he has prepared. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at the table with his disciples, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them, and their eyes were opened and they recognized him. As we share this meal, as I said before, phys physically it's not going to fill us, but spiritually it will fill us. It will empower us with God's power. On the night of his arrest, Jesus took the bread and after giving thanks to God, he broke it. He said, this is my body given for you. Take, eat. And then what did he say? Do this in remembrance of me. Remember the sacrifice. In the same way, he took the cup. He said, this cup is a sign of the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again. The gifts of God for you the people of God.
life. The bread of life, the body of Christ, let us share it together. of salvation. Let us pray. Eternal God, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I would ask at this time that the elders would cover the elements, please. Closing him this day is now let us from this table rise. If you are able, please stand.
Now you can shred. Now we can leave and serve God with all the power he has given us. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen.